Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 3rd edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary from Brad today, pointing your attention at a Seek and Defender Endpoint. In early this year, Microsoft announced that they'll be actively sort of supporting Seek and integrating it into Defender Endpoint. Tom has a quick diary now showing you some of the capabilities you're gaining here. If you're not familiar with Seek, it's sort of a great behavioral analysis network intrusion detection system. So it does focus on network traffic in modern networks with home users and such, it becomes more and more difficult to actually collect great network logs. Now, this is exactly where Seek fits in with Defender Endpoint. You can install it on your endpoints. Uh, so even if users are working from home and such, collect the Seek network data and then include it in your hunts and instant response, which is exactly what Tom is talking about a bit here. And imagine that we do have yet another remote unauthenticated API access vulnerability in Ivanti's mobile iron core. Yesterday, I think it was just that I mentioned the second vulnerability, which was not really all that severe. It was this arbitrary file write vulnerability after you have admin access. Of course, for the last uh, week or two, we have had lots of stories about hosts getting compromised using the original unauthenticated API access vulnerability. This is now a new one, CVE 2023-35082. CVSS score is a perfect 10. Luckily, this time Ivanti sort of is a little bit ahead of the curve and uh, they did identify this vulnerability as they state as part of work on a product bug. So not yet exploited, no exact details yet publicly known. And the patch has been made available with Mobile Iron Core 11.3. And according to a blog post by researchers from Guardio Labs, uh, Salesforce was recently abused in order to send spam to Facebook users. The tricky part here is that the spammer was able to send authenticated emails using the salesforce.com domain. Apparently a problem was in one of Salesforce's system. It was possible to essentially spoof email addresses, which then allowed NetHacker to more or less relay emails through the Salesforce system claiming to come from salesforce.com. And since they did now originate from legitimate Salesforce servers, standard sort of anti-spam, anti-phishing features did not catch these emails. In some cases, apparently Gmail, they were even marked as important because, well, Salesforce is usually considered a trusted company. And that's exactly the problem here by impersonating the Salesforce brand, it makes these uh, phishing emails so much more plausible. The problem has been fixed by Salesforce now. Interesting write-up from Guardio here regarding all the details involved in actually identifying this vulnerability. Part of the problem, of course, is that Salesforce does deal with a lot of emails and does allow organizations using Salesforce to basically set up sort of their own email response and such. And that's kind of what went wrong here. And Ariel Sarf and or Asper from Mitiga did write a blog post about how the AWS Systems Manager agent or SSM could potentially be used as a command control or remote access trojan. The concept isn't exactly new and uh, certainly a good idea to point this out in cloud environments like AWS, uh, but in AWS, many of the images that you're using to build an EC2 instance do come pre-installed with this uh, systems manager agent. It's essentially a little bit of software that allows you to interface with uh, various uh, control systems that are then being used uh, to manage uh, your EC2 instance. The problem, of course, is that since this is a trusted binary that has to run with elevated privileges because it does have to manage the system, it's 
also abusable Binet hacker who gained a foothold in the system to essentially now use this agent against the victim by basically just using its functionality to remote control the system. Uh, pretty neat trick. Like I said, not fundamentally new. We have seen uh, similar things like this also in on-premise systems and such with sort of similar systems agents installed, but definitely something to keep in mind if you are running in EC2. If you're using another cloud provider well just translate that for whatever systems agent this other cloud provider uses interestingly i often see malware specifically disabling some of these agents for alibaba for some reason don't really seem so much for the other cloud providers but of course these system agents can also be used against the attacker by collecting for example data from systems automatically in order to identify if they were compromised or not well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Did I miss a story? Well, uh, please uh, let me know if there are any stories I miss or uh, anything I uh, should talk more about. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.